waiting for a man who says he's going to blow the lid off the secrets of the religion of the stars to tell the story of the dark side of the Church of Scientology. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. I want to cover today a document that I consider absolutely vitally important in the big picture of Scientology. And it's a document that's not easily found and not many people, at least uh, who have come into the subject of late, know too much about it. But this is perhaps the most damning document that has ever been uh, in the history of Scientology. Um, I have it posted on my blog this morning. Um, I have in included a, a complete PDF copy of the document along with excerpts. Um, it is the document that summarizes the seized documents that were taken in the 1977 FBI raid of the Scientology Guardian's offices in Washington, D.C. and Los Angeles. It is the sentencing memorandum that was submitted by the Department of Justice after having gone through those files that they seized, thousands of documents from the Guardian's office, and it summarized what they found. And it expressed their view of Scientology's attitude toward the law, what Scientology uh, operatives had been engaged in. And it was submitted when uh, ultimately Mary Sue Hubbard and others pled guilty, and then they were to be sentenced. Uh, Mary Sue Hubbard got in 1979, I think it was, uh, was sent, uh, sentenced to five years in federal prison and a $10,000 fine. Uh, she didn't serve that whole time, but uh, her and the others were all convicted. Uh, there were unindicted co-conspirators in that case. L. Ron Hubbard was one of them. Also, Kendrick Moxon was an unindicted co-conspirator. He was in the Guardian's office in D.C. at the time. Uh, Hubbard managed to avoid prosecution in that case primarily because he never put his name on documents that were in the Guardian's office. He wrote uh, extensive instructions on how they were to conduct themselves, but they never had his name. And Mary Sue, his wife, and the other leaders, leaders of the Guardian's office protected Hubbard at all costs in their own testimony, saying that he was unaware of what they were doing. Uh, you know, it, it was uh, a cover-up, and it protected Hubbard, though it scared him half out of his mind, and he ended up in a permanent state of fear for the rest of his life. In fact, the last years of his life, he spent in hiding, traveling around uh, the California in a motorhome, um, living like a, a sort of a hermit. And uh, it, it had a huge impact on him and on Scientology. The activities of the Guardian's office and the, the dastardly deeds that were uncovered when they raided those two offices in D.C. and Los Angeles were absolutely pursuant to the policies of L. Ron Hubbard. Those same policies and directives remain in place to this day. They have not changed. Scientology continues to operate on the same policies that the Guardian's office were operating on back in the 60s and 70s. They have, of course, now been replaced by the Office of Special Affairs, but it's the same stuff. And if the FBI was to conduct a raid today and seize the files of the Office of Special Affairs, they would have the modern-day equivalent of the files that they seized 
from the Guardian's office in 1977, which then went on to result in the prosecution of those individuals. Uh, one of the things that prompted the raid was that Scientology, two Scientology agents, one of whom was named Michael Meisner, who was the intelligence officer in, in the Guardian's office in D.C., were caught in the IRS uh, with fake IDs stealing documents. Michael Meisner, um, they were supposed to appear for their indictment or arraignment or whatever, and he was whisked off to Los Angeles. Uh, he wanted to go come forward to the FBI or the DOJ and testify. The Guardian's office had other ideas and literally kidnapped him and kept him out of the hands of the government because he was uh, not willing to lie on behalf of Scientology. Uh, and, and he eventually escaped, and he escaped and went straight to the FBI, and that was what resulted in the search warrant being issued and all of these documents then coming out. Um, I want to go through a number of the pages of this. This is a 70-page document. It is very lengthy, and it contains a lot of details. But I feel it's important for the current people who are now uh, finding out about Scientology and for law enforcement that may not be familiar with this and for political people, for anybody, in fact, to know how uh, the Department of Justice viewed Scientology based on Scientology's documents of what they were engaged in and their pattern and practice of operation. And it's really important for people to understand that this is how Scientology operates today. It is not different. These policies have not been canceled. Scientology tries to claim that Fair games cancel. We don't even know what it is. Well, the policy of L. Ron Hubbard canceling fair games says we cancel the use of the term fair game. We do not cancel the treatment, how we treat suppressive persons. That is what all of these activities of the Guardian's office related to, how Scientology is supposed to go about treating their enemies, and they are still doing it to this day. So let's just run through some of the some of what's contained in in this sentencing memorandum, and I'm going to bring this up on screen as I read it. Um, this this is pretty hair raising stuff, as you are going to see. Uh, you may not be able to read it very well on the screen. Like I said. The entire document and these excerpts are at my blog. Uh, if you want to, to find that, let me just look. Uh, Mike Rinder's blog. Huh. That should be .org. Mike Rinder's blog .org. It's got a typo in it. Anyway, visit my blog and you'll be able to find that, this whole document. But here is the first section, which starts at the very beginning of the document, and it sort of gives a summary overview at the top. And I'm just going to go straight to the highlighted parts. The brazen, systematic, and persistent burglaries of United States government offices, forcefully kidnapping a witness, submitting false evidence to the grand jury, destroying other evidence, preparing a cover-up story, encouraging and drilling a crucial witness to give false testimony under oath to that grand jury. This is sort of the start of it. It lays out, these are the sort of things that these people were engaged in, and it is, it is uh, pretty nefarious, but it gets, it gets more detailed and more nefarious as you go along. So they then say, each and every one of the defendants herein 
fulfill his duties as expected by the Church of Scientology, that all of their criminal activities, as well as those of all unindicted co-conspirators, were carried out in furtherance of the very goals of their church. This is a, this is a very important point that Scientology engages in these things, and when caught, they try and explain it by saying, oh, oh, this, this isn't pursuant to Scientology policy. This is, this is not uh, what we believe. This is not our, our practice. Uh, these were rogue people. Mm, no, they were not. They were extremely dedicated Scientologists who were doing what they thought was necessary in order to deal with the enemies of Scientology. And as you may know from some of my other things on my blog and even YouTube videos now I've done, Scientology will lie about this sort of stuff because protecting Scientology uh, is so important to Scientologists that it trumps any other factors, law, morals, ethics, whatever. In fact, these defendants tried to persuade the government that this exact point sort of uh, got them off the hook. Scientology doesn't believe in doing anything unethical. Scientology uh, says follow the law. Scientology says this. Scientology says that. Uh, in fact, the government took that up and wrote in the, the memo, defendant, assertion that, quote, the policy of the church prohibits any illegality on the part of its members or staff is totally unfounded and incorrect. The evidence in this case and the documents seized by the FBI in Los Angeles established beyond peradventure that the church and its leadership had, over the years, approved, condoned, and engaged in gross and widespread illegality. Helt, who was Henning Helt, one of the defendants, asserted that, quote, I do know that church policy forbids illegalities and that express policy, which I am legally and spiritually committed to forward, forbids any illegal actions. In fact, the defendant Helt, on July 18, 1976, when he subscribed to that affidavit, under oath, knew that for the preceding few years, he and the remainder of the top leadership of his organization in England and the United States had ordered, sanctioned, solicited, and rewarded the commission of widespread violations of the law in the United States and in foreign countries. He flat out lied, trying to use the old story that Scientology kind of pulls out anytime it's convenient that, oh, we don't do anything illegal. L. Ron Hubbard policy forbids us from doing anything illegal as if that somehow magically makes all the things that they have actually done disappear. Oh, because L. Ron Hubbard said we can't do anything illegal. They <laughs> consider themselves to be above the law. And the Justice Department made uh, a number of statements about that. Um, they also uh, made statements about the unindicted co-conspirators. As you recall, I said L. Ron Hubbard was one of them, and so was Kendrick Moxon. They said the defendants and their unindicted co-conspirators, as well as their organizations, considered themselves above the law. They believed that they had carte blanche to violate the rights of others, frame critics in order to destroy them, burglarize private and public offices, and steal documents. N Believe me, nothing has changed. This is the same attitude that Scientology and the Office of Special Affairs and the Stand League and all these other bozos have to this day, and they will continue to have it. It even goes into detail and says uh, that 
they found that their efforts and the programs that they were using were pursuant to fair game and that they sought to cost people their jobs. Exactly as I have laid out the policy of L. Ron Hubbard in counterattack tactics describes. They say specifically the enemies of Scientology in order to discredit them and in some instances cause them to lose their employment. Anyone who did not agree with them was considered to be an enemy against whom the so-called fair game doctrine could be invoked. This is not the this is not the doctrine that Scientology uh, doesn't have. This is the doctrine that Scientology absolutely does have. Now, this next bit goes into a fairly lengthy description of the activities that they uncovered in these documents. And it's actually in two parts because it goes from the bottom of the page to the top. The first part says the well-orchestrated campaign to thwart the federal grand jury investigation by destroying evidence, giving false fingerprints in response to a grand jury subpoena, harboring a fugitive, kidnapping a witness, preparing an elaborate cover-up story, and assisting in the giving of false statements to the grand jury shows the contempt which these defendants had for the judicial system of this country. Their total disregard for the laws is further made clear by the criminal campaigns of vilification, burglaries, and theft, which they carried out against private and public individuals and organizations and carefully documented in minute detail. That these defendants were willing to frame their critics to the point of giving false testimony under oath against them and having them arrested and indicted speaks legion for their disdain for the rule of law. They arrogantly place themselves above the law, meeting out their personal brand of punishment to those, quote, guilty, unquote, of opposing their selfish aims. No building, office, desk, or file was safe from their snooping and prying. No individual or organization was free from their despicable conspiratorial minds. The tools of their trade were miniature transmitters, lockpicks, secret codes, forged credentials, and any other device they found necessary to carry out their conspiratorial schemes. This describes Scientology today. It is not Scientology in 1975, 76, 77, and everything changed subsequent to that. There was a PR line that was presented. Oh, these were rogue Scientologists who went off the reservation and did things in violation of the policies of L. Ron Hubbard. No, just look around today and see whether Scientologists are willing to lie, willing to frame and smear critics, whether they are willing to even testify falsely under oath. It's absolutely the same thing. Today, when you say this, and the reason I'm bringing this document up and want to make it uh, apparent to the world, is when you say this, people sort of look at you with a little disbelief and go, nah, they couldn't really do that. They're not going to go lie to a grand jury. Oh, yes, they are. They will if they believe that it is in pursuit of saving Scientology. I mean, the guys in the Guardian's office submitted false fingerprints to the grand jury. They framed Paulette Cooper by getting false fingerprints. In fact, the Paulette Cooper story and the Gabe Cazara story, which is laid out in this um memorandum. I have got a lot more excerpts of that on my blog. I'm not going to go into them here, but they lay out exactly the scheme that was perpetrated by the Guardian's office to try to get Paulette Cooper and Gabe Cazares uh, eradicated as enemies. And in the case of Paulette, uh, get her incarcerated either in prison or a mental institution, which they were well on the way to accomplish with their forgeries. The end of this document summarizes 
something really important. Um, and it's something that you hear from Scientology uh, being proclaimed to this day. Anytime anybody uh, finds something that they've done wrong, they jump to, up to the to be the aggrieved religious party uh, and need someone to help them out because such terrible things are being done to them. Here is what the Department of Justice said at the end of this memo. It defies the imagination that these defendants have the unmitigated audacity to seek to defend their actions in the name of, quote, religion, unquote that these defendants now attempt to hide behind the sacred principles of freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and the right to privacy, which principles they repeatedly demonstrated a willingness to violate with impunity, adds insult to the injuries which they have inflicted on every element of society. Like I said, this is perhaps the most damning indictment of Scientology in history. And it has been sort of lost. Uh, certainly Scientology doesn't want anybody to see this. Um, it's not necessarily easy to find. So I thought it would be a great public benefit to put this out there, make it easy for anybody to locate. You can get it on my blog, mikerindersblog.org. I will have a link to that in the description of this video. Um, it is something that I think needs to be disseminated more broadly. And I think it's really important for people to understand that this is not historical. This is a snapshot put together by attorneys for the United States Justice Department after studying thousands of documents that had been seized from Scientology and that those documents and the way that these people went about doing their dirty work is exactly the same today as it was in 1976, 1977. Nothing has changed. And you can be sure, like I said previously, if the FBI does another raid of these Scientology buildings, they are going to find exactly the same sort of stuff happening today because it is pursuant to the policies of L. Ron Hubbard and the beliefs of Scientology of what you must do to destroy the enemies of Scientology. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you find this informative. Please spread the word about this. It is, uh, it is really important. Until next time, bye for now.